The five terminal branches of the brachial plexus are some of the most famous nerves in the human body. Each has a unique set of motor and sensory functions and is essential to the functioning of your arm and forearm. In this series, I'll be covering the anatomy of the nerves of the upper limb in detail, starting with the axillary nerve. I've got another video already on the brachial plexus, which I'll link in the description below. But as a reminder, it's a confluence of spinal nerve roots leaving the C5 to T1 levels. These interconnect in a complex pattern as they pass through the axilla alongside the axillary artery. As they exit the axilla, they produce five large, unique terminal nerve branches which pass down into the arm. The first nerve we're going to look at from this plexus is the axillary nerve. The axillary nerve originates from the posterior cord of the brachial plexus, specifically from the nerve roots C5 and C6. It passes through the axilla between the subscapularis muscle behind and the axillary artery in front. At the inferior border of subscapularis, inferior to the glenohumeral joint capsule, it leaves the axilla alongside the posterior circumflex humeral artery and vein through a region known as the quadrangular space. This is a square spaced area bordered by the teres minor superiorly, teres major inferiorly, long head of triceps medially, and the humerus laterally. From here on, it's easier to visualize the axillary nerve from a posterior view. After going through the quadrangular space, the axillary nerve divides into three final branches. The anterior branch passes behind the surgical neck of the humerus along with the posterior circumflex humeral vessels. This branch curves around the humerus to supply motor innervation to the anterior part of the deltoid muscle. The posterior branch of the axillary nerve travels the other direction and produces branches that supply motor innervation to the posterior part of deltoid and the teres minor muscles. The deltoid and teres minor muscles have a range of functions but are predominantly involved in rotating and abducting the shoulder joint. This posterior branch continues down and around the deltoid muscle and hooks underneath it before traveling upwards once again. It terminates as a sensory branch to the skin overlying the back of the upper arm and the inferior deltoid, known as the upper lateral cutaneous nerve of the arm. The region of skin this branch takes sensation from is known as the regimental badge area, as shown here. The third and final part of the axillary nerve are the small sensory branches that supply sensation to the glenohumeral joint, known as the articular branches. So, in summary, the axillary nerve is a mixed motor and sensory nerve from the C5 and C6 roots in the posterior cord of the brachial plexus. It provides motor innervation to the deltoid and teres minor muscles and sensory innervation to the lateral and posterior shoulder. The location of this nerve means it's prone to injury when there's damage to the proximal humerus. Specifically, fractures at the surgical neck of the humerus may tear or entrap the nerve, and dislocation of the shoulder may stretch or compress it. This makes clinical assessment of the axillary nerve very important in shoulder examination, as early identification of injury will guide management. Anyway, that's all for now. Remember to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on the rest of this series covering the nerves of the upper limb. In the meantime, I hope you learned something and have a great day.